Vita is Latin and roughly translates to a singular word or phrase, life or way of life. The official name was chosen as the most appropriate name for the next generation portable entertainment system as it enables a revolutionary combination of rich gaming and social connectivity within a real world context. Sony Computer Entertainment is aiming to transform every aspect of your daily life into an entertainment experience. The PlayStation Vita was Sony Interactive Entertainment's second attempt in the portable space. It released in Japan on December 17th, 2011, February 15th, 2012 for North America, and February 22nd for the rest of the global market. The system was a first with dual analog sticks, a capacitive QHD OLED screen that was later revised to an LCD screen at a resolution of 960 by 540 pixels. It featured front-firing stereo speakers, six-axis motion sensors like those found in DualShock 3 and DualShock 4, Wi-Fi connectivity, and utilized proprietary cards for both ROM cartridges and game saves and save data. It was a very powerful system, in fact, one of the most powerful systems you can buy for six years on the market up until 2017. And the PlayStation Vita had quite the hard life on the market. Despite its powerful hardware, it was very pricey at launch, and while that is usually forgivable by most consumers, one misstep that it would never recover from was the utilization and execution of proprietary and pricey cards that were used for downloads and save data. And the system would frankly never recover from that. Fast forward to 10 years later, and the PlayStation Vita and its limited library of games have been steadily increasing in price since the hardware's discontinuation in 2019. But what is it like owning and playing on a PlayStation Vita nearly 10 years after the system launched? Well, let's find out. At face value, you'll notice that the PlayStation Vita systems are both very tiny, especially when you compare them to other smartphones and relative portable systems that are currently available in the market today. It can actually fit inside of your pocket with relative ease if you wanted it to, and on paper, even though the screens both seem to be low resolution by modern standards because of their overall size and the system size, they still look pretty sharp and crisp even to this day. I think that the PS Vita's compact size is its biggest strength, as it makes taking it with you on the go easy. Simply throw it in your front or back pocket or in your bag, and off you go. The game cartridges are very small as well, making carrying many of them at a time really easy, especially if you have a case to carry multiple game cartridges. When it comes to keeping the system charged, no matter which system you own, whether it's the PCH-1000, which was the original unit, or the PCH-2000, which was the later revised unit, it seems you're gonna be carrying a game cable for it, no matter which one you own. The original utilizes a proprietary USB cable for game charging and data transfer, and the second model utilizes the old Android-style USB Type-B connectors that used to be found on a lot of smartphones and was used with the PlayStation 4 system and its accessories. But given that most of the world has moved on to either Lightning or USB-C, no matter which one of these systems you own, you're going to be carrying a cable for them regardless. So something to keep in mind. From a user's perspective, the PlayStation Vita's user interface, which was dubbed Live Area by Sony, definitely looks dated by modern standards, whether you use iOS, Android, Windows, or Mac OS. But for what it's worth, it's still functional and does exactly what it needs to do with relative ease. It functions using either the onboard buttons or the capacitive touchscreen, but it's obvious from touch that the system was designed from the ground up with touch in mind first, with utilization of the buttons being more of an afterthought. And while that's perfectly okay, just be in mind that I feel that instinctively, most people are gonna to wanna to use the screens to navigate the PlayStation Vita's user interface, and it works perfectly fine. When it comes to the applications, that's where things seem to be all over the place. But let's go through some of the ones that are still perfectly usable. The PlayStation 3 Remote Play app still works, although to be honest, very few PlayStation 3 games ever utilize this feature, making its use sparse at best. The web browser does work, although in this day and age, I don't understand why anyone would want to use the PlayStation Vita for it. And the same goes with Netflix. The app works just fine, it's just very slow, and there are better devices that you can use to stream Netflix to. Live Tweet, which I guess is an extension for Twitter, and the calendar apps also work well, though you'd be better off using other devices for those two functions. Crunchyroll, Twitch, PlayStation 4 Link Remote Play, Trophies, Friends, and Messages all still seem to function fine as of the making of this video, 
Though, for the most part, most of those applications, you're better off using on either the PlayStation 4 system or PS5, or using your smartphone with the PlayStation app installed. That way you can send messages and compare trophies much faster than you can on the PlayStation Vita. As for remote play, that is probably the number one app that I will still recommend you use in this day and age if you're still gaming on the PlayStation 4, as no matter which Vita system you own, it still works just as good now with most of the PS4 games than it did day one. So usability is still top notch. Unfortunately, the PlayStation 4 remote play app is exclusive to the PlayStation 4 and does not work with the PlayStation 5 system. So if you're one of the handful of Vita users out there that was expecting the Vita to work with PlayStation 5 remote play functionality, I hate to burst your bubble, but it doesn't work. Would it have been cool? Absolutely. But alas, the system was never successful, so it wasn't worth Sony's time to implement the functionality for PS Vita and PS5 remote play. As for other applications, while the party functionality no longer works for PS4 and PS Vita users, it still works locally with PlayStation Vita users. And when it comes to applications like Nier, that was discontinued ages ago, Live from PlayStation, PlayStation Now, and YouTube have all lost their support ages ago, but I like to keep the bubbles on my live area just to sort of remind me of the days of old. One of the apps that still does work 100% as intended is obviously PlayStation Store, where you'll be buying some PlayStation Vita games, PS1 classics, PSP games, and any other games you can think of via the PlayStation Store. That is still perfectly functional as of the making of this video. To put it simply, while some applications work kind of sort of for the most part, some are just too slow to use, the vast majority of the apps, you're not going to want to use them, and if possible, I would recommend you just uninstall them from the system to free up space. That way you have more spots on the live area for your game bubbles. That way you're not taking up space using these unnecessary applications that you're rarely, if ever, going to use. So while the available apps are all over the place in terms of function and even practicality or usability, there is one thing that the PlayStation Vita still does very well despite its age and will continue to do well no matter how old the system gets. And that's playing games. Now, depending on who you ask, you're gonna get a varied response as to the overall quality of the system's library. Some people love it, some people hate it. For me personally, when I first bought my original PlayStation Vita back in 2013, it started off as a Western-focused AAA machine that then evolved into an indie machine that then evolved once more into an RPG, JRPG monster. To put it simply, if you love Japanese games of any kind, this system is going to be probably one of your favorites as there are tons of Japanese games, both RPGs and anything else you can think of, visual novels that were released for the system and arguably play best on this system. So it just depends on the type of gamer you are and what you're looking for with this system. But there is one more thing that the PlayStation Vita does very well that many people loved the PSP for and I think does much better than the PSP ever could have. And that is emulation. The PlayStation Vita is capable of buying games and downloading them to the system for PlayStation 1 and PlayStation Portable games but if you use the help of homebrew software, that unlocks the potential of using the OLED screen if you have the original model, both analog sticks, more buttons, more functionality, and a much prettier screen. Seriously, the original OLED screen still holds up with modern day OLED phones like the one found on my Sony Xperia Mark I here, and honestly, it still looks so good. And old legacy games, PS1 and PSP games, or anything else you can think of that this system can emulate really pop out on this screen. As for the 2000 series, the LCD still looks really good, but you're not gonna get that pop that you get when it comes to OLED screens. Just something to think about, but for what it's worth, it still looks great even today, regardless of which system you play on. So, We've talked about what you can do with the system, but obviously the PlayStation Vita had its own games that they tried to make you want to buy the Vita for. And some of the most beautiful games I can think of off the top of my head that really show you what the system could have been capable of had it been a commercial success are games like Killzone Mercenary, Uncharted Golden Abyss, Gravity Rush, Freedom Wars, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, and those are just the ones I can think of. There are plenty more that really show off the power locked away in this tiny little device. But like any game system, graphics aren't everything. It doesn't matter if you have the most powerful system on the market. If the fun factor isn't there, then no one's going to buy it. And unfortunately for the PlayStation Vita, I don't believe that the fun factor was the issue. It was pricing and marketing. 
but let's focus on the fun factor for a bit. Despite the system's age, I still have a lot of fun playing games on this thing. The PlayStation Vita, despite its age and the time it was released, gives you PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 level experiences, which is in my opinion, pretty impressive considering when the system launched. Many of the games that were released on PlayStation Vita were also released on the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4 systems with cross-buy, cross-connectivity, or all these other options available that really made the Vita feel like it was part of the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 family of systems. It fit in with that ecosystem and the way it was able to connect and communicate with them only helped lend itself to that idea that this is the PlayStation experience on the go. And even to this day, even though we're two generations ahead, now in the PlayStation 5 era, the PlayStation Vita still feels like it could be existing very well right next to the PlayStation 5. And with a few software updates and a refresh of the OS, this system could easily hold its own in this day and age up against the competition. And when it comes to the available games, the vast majority of them, believe it or not, are not available physically. Most of the PlayStation Vita's library is available digitally. And while some of the library has been released on cartridge, as you can see behind me, most people are probably gonna opt for buying the games through PlayStation Store or using the homebrew scene to just download the game straight from the internet. It just depends on the type of player you are. If you're a collector like me and you love collecting the hardware, the accessories, and the game cartridges, that's obviously what you're gonna opt in for. But if you don't care about any of that stuff, thanks to the homebrew scene, you can use um, regular standard SD cards with the help of game cartridge add-ons or hardware add-ons to bypass the proprietary SD card slot and you can just download as many games as you want, run emulators or custom software right on the PlayStation Vita system, making it a very versatile system. What many people use the PSP for to download games and run emulators for, the PlayStation Vita can now do that and it can do it better than the PSP, especially when you consider the dramatic increase of screen qualities that happened from the time the PSP launched to the time the original PlayStation Vita system launched. To basically summarize it all up, I have to say this. Despite the system's age, despite being a decade old, I still have a lot of fun playing games on the PlayStation Vita system. And thanks to its small compact size, like I've previously discussed, it makes taking it on the go a cinch. We've gotten used to carrying these giant iPhones around or these giant portable systems like the Switch, that when you go back and play a on a system that's actually really genuinely portable, it makes taking the Vita around with you so much more convenient than even some smartphones. And it's something to consider as you look into the system. But bear in mind, as time moves onward, the systems are only going to continue getting more and more expensive and the price for the game cartridges and accessories are not coming down anytime soon. So keep that in mind if you have any intention on playing the PlayStation Vita. Because unfortunately, like any other system that doesn't do well, it goes through a drop where people can't get rid of the stuff and then within a couple years the prices spike and now everyone's fighting to get their hands on a very limited supply of games and hardware. I'm just grateful that I got my collection done long before its popularity peaked. So with that being said, let me know your thoughts down there in the comments section. What is your opinion on the PlayStation Vita system? Did you own maybe the 1000 or the 2000? And if you did, what games did you play on it? And did you have fun playing on it? Or have you never owned a Vita? Let me know your thoughts down there in the comments section. I'd like to thank you for spending this time with me today. Stay happy and healthy. And as always, I will see you in the next video. But until then, take care.